Hello you lovely people, welcome back to my channel and to another portable emulation device video and this time they're both from TeamU and uh, yeah I've covered a lot of stuff from TeamU guys some uh, yeah not so good quality and some uh, fantastic quality and this is one of them guys this is fantastic quality both of these devices are absolutely fantastic in their own right but this is a kind of comparison video of which one of these you might want to pick up because both of these machines were, you know, fairly expensive at the time when they were released. Uh, the Ambernec RG351V was just short of 200 quid. And then the Play Go, that was about 125. So quite a big difference there. But now they've become mid-range devices and hence why they're now available on places like Banggood, AliExpress, Teemu and so on. Um, yeah, this has gone down guys, this beautiful, beautiful wood grain version which is the one I got myself and it is beautiful, just look at it, it's gorgeous guys. Um, RG351V is now Eighty-six pounds and forty-nine pence on TMU, and that's with free postage, guys. And it takes roughly uh, just over a week to two weeks to arrive, so not bad. And this one has gone down oh, to a very, very, very desirable sixty pounds and ninety-eight pence again, free postage, and takes about the same amount of time to arrive he says as it's gone down on me here we go get it back up there we are so yeah absolutely fantastic both of these handhelds now this one out of the box guys it runs Amulek but we've put on the fantastic Arc OS which I think is a brilliant uh, OS uh, so you can keep it on Amulek if you want uh, also you can then put on uh, yeah, Arc OS if you prefer. Uh, this one is a Linux based machine. Now, what you see here on the screen at the moment is just uh, one launcher. There is lots of other launchers you could put on there instead, but I'm going to show you uh, what it came like out of the box. With Emulec and uh, Arc OS and what have you, they're quite similar in a lot of ways from the look, so I just kept it like that. So, yeah, what? <laughs> comparisons can we possibly make well a hell of a lot guys because one big thing already guys you can see here is obviously this one is shaped like a Game Boy it's quite a bit bigger but it has got the Game Boy look to it uh, and this one of course is in landscape mode this is uh, yeah more like your Game Boy Advance type uh, screen on it so yeah fantastic absolutely fantastic quality fantastic absolutely fantastic quality but there is a lot of differences as well so yeah let's go over what the extra bit of money that you're going to pay for this one you know i mean we're talking oh yeah nearly 30 quid more not sharp not far off 30 quid more for this one and um, but yeah let's take a look at them individually and see exactly which one you might want to go for. Is there a massive difference in the quality? Is there a massive difference in the performance? Let's find out for you now, shall we? Right, we'll start with looking at the absolutely fantastic Play Go. Right, back in a sec. Right guys, let's start with the play go like i said um yeah this is a fantastic little handheld guys it really really is um oh that screen is just beautiful on this it really is and like i said very much like the original game boy advance um you know in its form factor of how you hold it um instead of being a portrait uh, style handheld it is a landscape uh, sometimes that can be a bit of a problem with some of the older systems, especially, you know, if they were meant to be played on the TV, but it's very adjustable. You can actually set it to how you want it. You can have it full screen, you can have it in the original screen and all that. But first of all, we're going to take a look, like I said, 
at the quality of this thing. Now, I can tell you straight away that this is fantastic plastics that's been used, guys. It's lovely. Very, very sturdy. When you press it, there's no horrible noise or anything like that. This, this is just fantastic, fantastic plastic that they've used. Now, here we have the mono speaker, but it's very loud. It's a very, very loud speaker for a mono speaker. Um, I'm going to get one elephant out of the room straight away, and that's this button here. Now, initially, that button could take you back to like the home menu. You would press that and it would take you back, and it did have menu written there. Um, but they took that away. I mean, it still clicks, as you can hear, but it does absolutely nothing. And when they were asked about why they took that away, the company said, it was because it wasn't really being used. Um, yeah, don't really get that, but there you go. Yeah, you would have had the printed, uh, you know, menu uh, symbol there. Um, but yeah, no, they took it away. So that is one mm, side to this. You can get earlier versions of this that does still have that. So yeah, but you won't get that from Team U, guys. You'll get one of these, uh, the newer updated version. So. Let's start with the buttons. Well, for a start, you've got A, B, X, and Y. Or Y and X. A, B, Y, and X. And they're lovely, guys. I mean, look, I've just gone into something here. Let's go back. There we go. But yeah, they, they feel absolutely fantastic. They really do. Here we go, skipping into things here because I'm trying to show you. Um, but yeah, they are absolutely wonderful buttons. Um, the directional pad is beautiful as well. It just feels tactile enough. It doesn't overpress. Um, it's just spot on, guys. It really, really is. Uh, this one is a little bit more, hmm. Yeah, not really sure about this uh, little pad, guys. Um, very much like the PSP type pad. Um, mm, analog stick, sorry, but can you hear that? It does make a bit of a scraping noise, which is a yeah, a little bit of a worry. Um, but it does perform very well. It's got no um, kind of like bells and whistles to it. There's no plastic covering on it, rubber covering, anything like that. That is just hard plastic. And it does get a bit slippy if you get sweaty hands. Um, but yeah, it does do what it's meant to. To be honest, though, I mean, you're going to use your D-pad a lot more than that one. I mean, there will be some games where you probably want to use the analog stick. And um, then, yeah, start and select and all that. They feel fantastic as well. Then moving to the top, guys, you have shoulder buttons. Yeah, you got two on each side. So they feel absolutely fantastic as well. You can see you can skip through that top menu there with that one and you can skip back. So you go from, say, games to emulators and all that. And then these two are fantastic as well. Just so clicky, guys. Can you hear that? Absolutely lovely. But not over clicky to wind the crap out of everybody if you're playing it at night. But although if you're playing it at night, um, yeah, <laughs> you might want to warn your partner anyway because, you know, there is still a bit of noise there. And if they're very uh, light sleeper, shall we say, that could freaking annoy them. Uh, so yeah, they're the shoulder buttons, guys. Wonderful. I didn't mention on the front here, guys, that you do have a power light. So that will keep you up to date on what kind of charge you've got in this thing. Um, right, so yeah, that is your shoulder buttons. Fantastic. Then also up here, guys, turning it around, here we have your uh, volume. So it's nice to have that, that you don't have to do it in the OS or whatever. No, you have physical, actual physical uh, volume buttons up and down. There you have your on and off switch. There you have your C cable. Aye, C cable on a device that is now only £60.98. That's fantastic. And there you have a headphone jack right there. And you can see this banding, guys, is lovely. If you were to get the red, then you will get this black banding all the way around. Then that brings us nicely to this part here. Because this brings me to another fantastic thing about picking this up. Um, you get two SD cards with it. So you get a 16 gig SD card, which has the OS on it. And then they also include a 64 gig 
SD card. And that's for this £60.98 pence, guys, that has a ton of ROMs already on it. And of course, you can adjust that and put your own ROMs if you want on there instead, because they're very, very odd sometimes, the ROMs that are included in these things. So yeah, that is fantastic. A 64 gig card for your storage and then a 16 gig card for your uh, OS which you can then, of course, put different launchers on and what have you if you want a different look. Then here, guys, is a, a reset button. So if you get any problems on there, it freezes or anything like that, you can just press that and you're okay and you're good to go again. Then on this side, guys, absolutely jack. On this side, absolutely jack. So yeah, that is all the buttons. But yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. Right, let's have a look at the back. He says putting that down for a sec. Here we go. Oh, no, it won't do it. All right, then. Okay. So here we go at the back, guys. Now, this is something that I've heard a lot of people complain about. They think that this looks very, very cheap. Um, but again, the plastic's absolutely wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, it's a bit of an odd choice of theirs to um, have this kind of battery cover where you're basically going to force that down to get it up. If you know what I mean, if you know, uh, you know, trouble having getting it up. But yeah, very odd choice. But I'd rather see that than a flipping screw. And the one good thing about this is it's not a built in battery, guys. It is changeable. So, you know, it's like batteries are never enough, are they? This one, you can buy another battery. So, yeah, let's go in here. And I'll show you. There we go. Yeah, there you are. And you can pick these up quite easily on eBay and places like that. So yeah, fantastic that you can do that. This is not your Nokia style battery. It's a lot bigger um, and it lasts for a very long time, guys. But it is a lithium rechargeable, of course. But yeah, isn't that fantastic that you can buy yourself another one? So if you're taking this away with you, you know, for the day or whatever, and you think you're going to run out of battery because your relatives are boring the crap out of you, he says, oh, look, trying to get this back on, and you're using it a lot, um, yeah, that that is fantastic that you can put another battery in there. Absolutely wonderful. And as I say, guys, they're easy enough to source as well. So yeah, wonderful. There we go, back on. See, I did get there in the end. You all thought I was going to fall flat on my face then, didn't you? Well, I did, but who cares? I've done it now. Right, okay, here we go. So, yeah, that is absolutely wonderful about this machine to start with, that you can change that battery. So that's a massive, massive pro there, isn't it? Definitely. Right, so let's have a look here then. Um, yeah, as you can see, guys, you've got... Straight out of the box, you've got loads of different emulators here. Absolutely wonderful for that. You've got all sorts there, guys. Look, we'll pull it in a bit. You've got MAME, you've got 3DO even, you've got Atari 2600, DOSBox, and, uh, yeah, Game Boy Color, Game Boy, NES, and Final Burn. You have Genesis, and you've actually got two different emulators for that. You've got Pico Drive as well. Uh, yeah, it just goes on and on, guys. Um, absolutely wonderful. Wonder Swan. All this, guys. Look, uh, Pocket Neo Geo. There we go with uh, GBA, Game Boy Advance, of course. Uh, SNES. And down here, Temper. You have, oh, just Neo Geo. Lots and lots of different ones, guys. N64. You've got MAME down there again, which is a different version. Um, yeah. It is absolutely fantastic. PlayStation, of course. Yeah, just, just just wonderful. And then you also have, out the box, guys, that is, if you move over the next selection there, which is games, you have all these ports. So you've got tons and tons of ports as well, which are absolutely fantastic to see on here. There's some great ones there. Uh, like uh, some of the uh, knockoff Zeldas and what have you. And yeah, just a ton of them, guys. You've even got things like Doom on here. Oh, just, just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So yeah, fantastic that is. But what I thought we'd do, just to see like a performance type thing, uh, I thought the best thing to do is, because these medium range uh, handhelds that were, you know, pretty expensive originally and have come down in price... Usually, with a few exceptions, they go maximum, really. Uh, PlayStation, uh, 
Yeah, that is for completely smooth running your talking PlayStation 1. Uh, some of them you can tinker a bit with and get N64 working nicely on them. But yeah, it, basically, to, to be safe and sure of getting a good gaming experience, you're looking at PS1. So what we'll do is we're going to move over there again, back to emulation, and we'll go down to PS1, and I shall run a PS1 game on the Playgo, and then I'll run one on the Ambonic as well. So right, let's go down to PlayStation. Here we go. Let's go in. And there we are, guys. I've got a few games there. I mean, literally just three there, just for the sake of this video at the moment. Uh, but we'll go with, ooh, Rockman. Which, of course, as we all know it, under a very different name indeed, Rockman is the name of Mega Man in Japan, of course. And this is Rockman X6. So let's see how this PlayStation game runs on here. There we go, guys. You can turn it up, obviously. Let's have a little pop with that and see if we can do that a bit. Let's see. Hopefully that. Not too loud, but loud enough for you to uh, hear it. Now, you're going to see some fantastic emulation here on a, you know, just over £60 handheld. This is absolutely fantastic emulation. Right, let's skip it on. Because I'm sure you don't want to see all that. Look at that beautiful screen, guys. And look, when you turn it, <laughs> you don't really lose anything at all. That is absolutely fantastic. Look at that. What a gorgeous panel it has in here. Fantastic. It really is. Right, let's have a look then. Press that and get going. Come on. Yeah, obviously this is the uh, Japanese version, but we'll just skip through. Yeah, okay, thank you. There we go. Let's see to get some actual gameplay here. Come on, stop loading. <laughs> yeah, here we go, guys. I'll tell you what, this is awesome. It really, really is. Here we go, a load of old talk again. Let's try and skip through that quickly. And here we go. Right, so you can see here, guys. Brilliant. There we go. We should. You can see absolutely fantastic emulation here, guys. Wonderful. Right. Wicked. Right, how gorgeous is that? Running like an absolute dream. And this is a, a little bit more intense, this game, you know what I mean? Uh, it's not the uh, simplest game to emulate, but usually at the best of times. So yeah, this is an absolutely fantastic performance by this wonderful, wonderful handheld. As you can uh, see. Let's get up there. So it's going to go up there. No, more let me. Okay, then fine. There we go. Next bit. So yeah, that is a fantastic test of this machine. The sound is spot on, even though it's that mono speaker. And I mean, this is set quite low. Let's show you actually just how high this can actually go, he says. Let's have a look. Oh, we've got the wrong side, guys. Let's have a look. Oh, you bugger, come on. There we go. That's incredible, isn't it? Yes, it certainly is incredible. 
Um, yeah, absolutely wonderful that you can get to that volume, but some people think it's actually too loud, and there's been a lot of people who've been taking them apart, like with these screws here, of course, and putting sellotape under here, and it tones it down a bit more, um, because the lower setting, which you can see, it says, here we go, the lower setting before going off, is that. Of course, if you're trying to be quiet, just plug your earphones in. There's no need to go taking this apart. I mean, you might want to take it apart because something I didn't mention earlier is that you actually get uh, other buttons that you can put in as well, like snare style buttons, which is wonderful that you get the choice of those buttons to put in here. And all you do is, like I said, take it apart with those screws and then you can pop the other buttons in. So that is an actual fantastic choice for you to do that. I mean, I've kept mine with the black and red theme, and I think that looks wonderful. So yeah, that is looking at this device, guys, and talking about the quality, and it is absolutely wonderful. And look at that form factor, guys. Look, it's very, very slim. Just the right kind of size to be pocketable, but not be too tiny. Got a gorgeous screen in it, and that form factor is beautiful. It really is. Well, let's do this. <laughs> it says. There we go. That's better. So, yeah, that's how you quit, guys. Most of the emulators, you just press this, uh, you know, your power button, and then you can quit. So, yeah, that's that one. So, that was a look at the Play Go. But now it's time to move on to the Ambonic RG351V wood grain in my case uh, and take a look at what that extra bit of money can get you right back in a sec right so here we go guys here we are with the wonderful ambernick rg 351v and as i keep saying guys i got the wood grain version which is beautiful and i i picked this one because i got such a lot of nostalgia for the old wood grain thing from the 2600 the woody of course um yeah i love the look of this i think it's fantastic it won't be everybody's cup of tea but you can get all sorts of other different colors but this is the one i chose from team you and Again, guys, look, this form factor is beautiful. Yet yeah, very uh, different, obviously, <laughs> to the uh, Play Go because this is in portrait. This is more like the original Game Boy in uh, shape, isn't it? Uh, slightly bigger, like I said earlier. It, you know, it feels very, very nice in the hand, though. Um, very nice indeed. And, of course, this is a familiar kind of screen that we're used to from the Game Boy line. Um, the buttons... Again, guys, we'll start with the buttons. This is a fantastic pad. Now, this is very much like what you get in the Switch. It's got that rubber feel to it. It just beautifully turns. Wow, absolutely gorgeous. I mean, there is just no comparison between this one and the nubbin that you get on the Play Go. This is absolutely gorgeous. And yeah. The sweat doesn't matter because it just sticks to your finger more because it's got that rubber feel to it. And, you know, this little bit of an indent here also gives it a nice swirl there and it doesn't uh, disrupt anything having that indent going right the way around. Uh, it still feels brilliant. Uh, start. Oh, lovely. Little bit of tactileness to it there, you know, so you, again, your fingers wouldn't slip off it if you need to press it quick for any reason. Uh, then you've got, of course, here we have the A, B, Y and X again. And these are gorgeous. They are absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, wow. Just enough. Just enough press there, guys. Wonderful. You can hear a little bit of clickiness, but not too much, not too over the top. And then here, guys, with the uh, the old kind of like home button reset uh, it does quite a lot of different things actually it gets you into all sorts of different menus and what have you and that is very nice feeling as well so yeah wonderful buttons there now this is not everybody's cup of tea what well, i'm going to show you next but i love it i think it's beautiful here we go these buttons here guys look at these they sit just nicely halfway down the system 
Oh, and just listen to that. Can you hear those micro switches? That is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Um, so yeah, I love them. I absolutely love those buttons, guys. I think they're fantastic. Now, no battery that you can remove here, guys. This is built in. So yeah, you're only gonna have the juice you got in it at the time until charging it. You can't swap the battery out like you can on the Play Go. But look at this texture here, this is fantastic. And just enough, oh, there guys, have your, your thumbs nicely sitting comfortably with it like this. So yeah, absolutely gorgeous. So I love those shoulder buttons being here. You know, being on there guys, rather than on the top, because you'd have a long bloody reach there, wouldn't you? Yes, you flipping would. But again, back around the front here guys, as you can see, it's just a mono speaker again like on the play go so yeah but it does have a fantastic sound it has to be said so yeah the buttons are wonderful the screen is absolutely stunning as you will see in a minute and um, yeah very very on par if not even slightly better than the play go which is already just fantastic on its own and on the bottom guys you have got what looks like two c ports but yeah, it is two C ports. One is for charging only. The other is also an OTG port. So yeah, if you want to plug in any external stuff, including a Wi-Fi doggle, you can do that right there. In the middle, you've got a headphone jack. So yeah, wonderful. Then on the side, guys, again, two SD slots. And it's the same story as the Go. You have a 16 gig card that comes with this that has the OS on it and you have then the storage of a 64 gig again card for your games so yeah wonderful that both of these devices come with two memory cards a 16 gig and the 64 gig then you have a reset button here and then you have your yeah your on and off on the side there again wonderful wonderful then on this side, guys, once more, you have the volume. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. That is not just, you know, having to be done within the OS itself. You have a physical, yeah, volume rocker here. I love this as well, guys, with these uh, little details here. Love it, love it. Just, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous looking device. I mean, the Go is gorgeous as well. But... This is the killer for me against the gore is this stick um, and in general the buttons are a little bit better so that for a start is where your extra money is going is into things like this the uh, the fantastic stick uh, also the look of this thing being so nostalgia you know driven uh, looking like the game boy and um, yeah just 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 beautiful absolutely beautiful and you can see from the quality of this product um, just where your extra money is going can't you but let's turn this on and take a look shall we here we go there we go it's booting up with arc os as i said we we upgraded it and i'm going to pull it down so we can see this there we go come on this beautiful screen guys as you're about to see absolutely gorgeous it does take a little while from a fresh start Oh, here we go. You can see how quick it goes in. A little bit. Yeah, but then when you're in, guys, wow. Just look at that screen. That is absolutely gorgeous. And as I say, with uh, the Play Go being a Linux device, it's got a lot more complicated, um, you know, menu system. This is very straightforward. As you see, you come straight on to Game Boy Color. And you go all the way through, guys, the different machines this device does. And there is a hell of a lot more than there is on the Pocket Go. And you can add a lot more than you can on the Pocket Go. Um, but yeah, it just goes on and on. Then you've got things like, obviously, your options are there. You've got your favourites where you can... Oh, you, the games that you love the most. I mean, this isn't even half of what you can put on this thing, guys. It is just wonderful what you can put on here. Right, let's make our way down to PlayStation. Here we go. And uh, yeah, there is Crash Bandicoot with his thumb up. 
saying hello with his big toothy grin. Right, let's go in. All right, so you can see here, I've got quite a few more games on this handheld. Uh, yeah, you've got all sorts there. You've got Croc and God knows what else, Rayman and what have you. Um, but let's take a look at, hmm, yeah, Rayman. Let's see how that plays. Here we go. There we go, it's coming up slowly here. I do apologise about the light, it seems to be reflecting once again. Right, so yeah, we want English, of course. Again, you're seeing something fantastic here, emulation-wise. Again, with the mono speaker, it's good enough, guys. I could turn it up more, but I'll keep it at this. Right, here we go. Hi, folks. You want to know what's going on? Let me tell you the story of Rayman. Fantastic emulation, guys. Not only a cutscene, but still awesome. And at 8649 it's a bargain this thing. It's beautiful. One fateful day, the evil Mr. Dark steals the great protoon and defeats Batilla the Fairy as she Running tries like a drain. to protect it. Right, shall we move it on now and let's uh, see. Let's move it on and get to the gameplay. Right, here we go guys. Press start, that helps. There we go. Uh, no, we just wanted to do the normal one, you bugger. Oh dear. Right, here we go. Yeah, let's just go for that. That'll do, thank you. Get down there, you bugger. Alright, whatever then. Okay. There we are. And a start. Right, here we go. Another bit of a cutscene here. Right, here we go. You can see just how beautiful this looks on this gorgeous, gorgeous screen, guys. And bearing in mind, this is a mid-range system now. Now that there's all these other systems out there. Stealing the limelight. But these systems are still... Fantastic to pick up, they really are. Yeah, I'm probably going to fall in the river in a minute. Oh, I'm trying to get that light out of the way for you. Here we go. As you can see, guys, it is running fantastic. Oh, I thought I was going to fall in the uh, river again, but no. Yeah, this is absolutely fantastic. Look at it. Brilliant. The music is spot on, the graphics are fantastic. Let's do one more level. Here we go. I'm just going to go quickly through this level, just showing you how beautiful it looks, how beautiful it sounds, and just how fabulously it runs. And it really, really does. It is awesome. Here we go. Way the bloody bomb, I forget about all those buggers. Here we are, got away from that, cool. Over here, yeah. Stupid light in the way again. Oh dear. Here we go guys, oh they're going to get me in a minute. Oh here we go, oh our photo taken. There we go, cool. Over here, way up there. And up we go. Yeah, as you can see guys, running like a dream. Hey, come on you bugger, get over there, that's it. There we go, absolutely fantastic. I think you'll agree. What a fantastic performance all round, guys. Uh, the emulation is just beautiful. But it's time for my final thoughts on this matter. And what is the king out of these two? Although it'll be a very close one thing. But yeah, let me explain why. And what it is a pick. Right, 
Back in a sec. Right, well, there we go, guys. That was a fantastic look at both of these handhelds in this versus um, video, guys. And I'll tell you what, they're both absolutely fantastic and you won't go wrong with whichever one you might want to pick. Now, down to the nitty gritty, because it is nitty gritty, guys, because there's so many wonderful things about either one of these systems. Now, let's talk about this one first. And uh, yeah, the form factor, guys, is fantastic. You know, the, uh, the original... Obviously, Game Boy Advance was extremely popular because of its form factor, and that is why, to this day, people are putting brand new screens into that machine. And, uh, yeah, because that was the only thing where it faltered, wasn't it? It had a really bad screen. It didn't have a, a light in it and all that. And now they're making it into this wonderful form factor still there, but with a wonderful modern screen. And that's what this is, isn't it? It's that kind of thing. You know, you had other ones like the PSP and what have you, and the Vita that are in this kind of landscape uh yeah model so fantastic for that the quality of the build is brilliant the only thing that's a bit iffy yeah is this is that uh yeah that nubbin that nub is a bit of a uh, yeah the analog stick guys it's not the greatest but it's not bad either and you know i've, I've used a hell of a lot worse in the past the fact that you get the 16 gig card in there and the 64 gig card is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. The one big thing that puzzles me is that button. Um, yeah, why they took that feature away, I do not know, but they left the bloody button there and it still clicks like I showed you earlier. Absolutely baffled to me, because that would have been a fantastic way to just quickly cut back to the menu. Why they took that away, I'll never know. And one of the other things, guys, is, yeah, the uh, the battery cover that a lot of people are very, very, uh, yeah, <laughs> mourning about, really. Um, they don't like it. They think it looks cheap and all that. Let's turn it around and show you again. But I feel differently about it. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a strange one to go for that. It would have been better if it would have been a proper clip that you just unclip and pull. Because you're risking breaking this. I mean, it's very, very thin. That strip that you're pushing down is very thin and you could possibly snap it. And um, so, yeah, in that sense, I get it wasn't the best option, guys. You should have just gone for a normal battery cover, but it's fantastic you got a battery cover because that is a rechargeable lithium battery and you don't have to uh, worry about putting disposable batteries in. You don't have to worry about having a built in battery like this one has. So, yeah, you can just swap it and get more play out of it because you can take extra batteries with you. So that is fantastic. And yeah, emulation performance, as you saw, on uh, what I would consider to be the hardest system to emulate on one of these, um, because that is really safely about the best performance you're gonna get is PS1. Uh, to go any further than that, like N64 and on, it's gonna be very choppy, and in some cases won't play at all. So yeah, absolutely fantastic. You saw that with that PlayStation 1 title running on there. What a fantastic thing. And bearing in mind the price, guys, it's so much cheaper than the Ambernick. But that then brings me on to the Ambernick. Oh my God, is this beautiful. I mean, that is a gorgeous looking thing already. It really is. But this just takes it up a notch. And... <laughs> This, this is fantastic quality. The plastics are fantastic, but this is even better, guys. So much better, even. It is absolutely gorgeous looking. The build quality is superb. The emulation running on there is superb as well. And this one, you can push your look a bit and go a little bit further. You can actually put Dreamcast games on here. They won't run 100%, but they won't be that bad either. Uh, some of them anyway. Uh, yeah, so you can push this further. It does more systems as well. Now, you can't even compare the two. This analog stick is beautiful. Like I said, 
It's very much like a Switch analog stick. So you've got the quality there, the Nintendo type quality there. All the buttons are fantastic. The screen, yeah, although it is in what we uh, call a portrait mode, it's what we're used to. It's a familiar thing, isn't it? Anybody who's ever played a Game Boy recognises this. And there's a hell of a lot of other systems out there now, even emulation devices which have gone this way because of the nostalgia people have for that kind of screen from the days of the Game Boy, the Game Boy Color and so on. Oh, you can learn to live with it guys, even with the games that weren't necessarily made to run on a screen like that. You can adjust it and wiggle it around and uh, yeah, and it'll run a hell of a lot better and look a hell of a lot better. You might put a border on it, but so be it. It will still look fantastic. Then of course, again the aesthetics guys, look at that. Those buttons just make it for me. They are wonderful, absolutely wonderful. So. The performance again you know oh I've got to keep harping on about it guys because it runs beautifully you saw that yourself with again a PlayStation game how awesome did that run on here Rayman ran like a dream oh it is just an absolutely gorgeous thing and Ambernick are a well established company they have been doing this for a long time and they are right on the bell with most of their units and this one is no exception this is fantastic and no you can get newer ambonics now you know ones that are um, more capable but for the price range it is fantastic and that is why this is the one i'm going to pick because oh it is just that much better than this one even though it costs a little bit more you are getting the value for the money you really are because this is an absolute dream and oh yeah you will not regret it if you pick one of these up but like i said earlier either one guys you will be very very happy with whatever one you pick it depends on your price range of where you want to go but yeah if you got a little bit extra then i would suggest you get this one and if you just want a quick and a cheaper device that still performs like a dream this one so it's entirely up to you guys because of course i own both i love both and i'm so glad i got both but you might want to check one of them out and not so much the other when you go to your basket so yeah over to you guys let me know in the comments what you thought of this comparison video and uh, yeah which one would you go for are you going for one or do you own either one of these, or like me, even both? Let me know in the comments, guys. You know how much I love to read your comments. And with that, I'm going to wrap things up, and I'm going to say the usuals. If you're not subbed already, please drop me a sub. Give me a thummy thumbs up if you feel that way inclined. And of course, tap the bell icon and the all icons to get any future notifications whatsoever. And again, guys, if you love emulation and retro consoles, I've got a fantastic group for you on Facebook. It is the Retro Emulation and Consoles fan group and with 4,000 members guys you can't go wrong lots of like-minded people to banter with and a ton of content guys because we've got everything from system unboxing system reviews emulation performance tech help videos and a whole lot more and the world's greatest admin team behind us as well so if that floats your boat just head below there's a link there come over we'd love to see you then guys, I also have my UK Crowd Gaming Facebook group as well. We will cover everything gaming from the dawn of gaming with Paul Missions right the way through to PS5s and everything that came in between. Again, tons of content there because other YouTubers put their videos up every single day. And ever-growing member base and fantastic admin team. So if you just love video games full stop, head below. There's a link there and we'd love to see you there as well. And then finally guys, I have my channel membership. For as little as 99 pence a month, you can become a member of the UK Crap family. This will give you access to the members only videos. And it'll also get you a badge next to your name, which tells everybody that you are a member of the UK Crap family and changes color every month. And again, guys, there is other tiers of other perks attached. Just find that join button, come over, take a look and see what you think. And with that, I'm gonna love you and leave you and say videos in. Tschüss and goodbye. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye.